This procedure demonstrates the internal components of the Autotroll 255. This is the teardown procedure for the Autotroll 255 valve. We have the 400 series controller as well as our Logic series controller on this valve. As we rotate them around, we can see that from the top plate down, they are identical in terms of components and placement. The 400 series has the integrated air check, whereas the Logic series does not. For the purposes of our teardown, we will use the 400 series controller. We begin by removing the air check assembly. There are two brass screws that will hold this down to the body. Once the two screws are removed, we have access to the check ball that is on the inside. This should be pliable and not show any scoring. We also have an O-ring assembly that seals the air check to the body. If this is damaged, it can cause an air or a water leak. We can then get access to our injector assembly as well as our brine refill flow control. The refill flow control can be unthreaded. Mechanical units will use the dial style where the number of pounds of salt being used during a regeneration are indicated on the front. We do not recommend making any adjustment to this without dealer input. On the ceiling area, there are different openings. This seats against the check ball that is located inside the body. The more open, the more salt that will be used during a regeneration. The electronic units will either have a washer style or a single opening style that would also use a ball. The injector is located under this cap. We'll use our Torx T50 tool in order to remove the cap. Behind there, we'll find the injector assembly. We'll pull it straight forward. 400 series assemblies use primary color units, whereas Logic style units will use pastel type colors. Make sure to match up the color for the size tank that you have and the operating pressure you're using it at. We can then move to the opposite side of the unit. In the front we have our screen assembly and in the rear our backwash flow control. We remove the screen assembly using the same Torx T50 tool. The water flows through the screen assembly and into our injector. We then move to the rear of the valve where the backwash flow control is. As we pull this loose, we make note that this one is designed for a 9 inch softener tank by the 9 that is written on the front. This matches up with the correct amount of flow that would need to lift the bed up. Larger tank sizes may have the washer style, so we'd want to make sure that if you have the washer style, you do not use a check ball. We want to check the condition of the check ball that is in the body to make sure it is pliable and there is no scoring on it. We can then move up to the top plate of the unit. We can remove the cam by rotating the gear on the back to allow access to the cam to come to the side. The valve disc will push it out to the side and we can pull it towards the rear of the unit. Once that is removed, we can move to the front of the unit where we locate the pin that holds the timer down. We rotate this down and pull it forward. We can then grab the timer and pull straight up. This gives us access to our one-piece spring assembly. To remove this, we pull up and backwards in order to remove it. Older style units may have individual springs for each of the locations. You can retrofit to the one piece assembly. We then have access to all 12 of the top plate screws. All of these need to be removed in order to get access to our valve discs. Once we have all of the screws removed, we can pull the top plate straight up. That gives us access to pull each of our individual valve discs up. 
The ceiling face is the side that is closest to the injector side of the body. We want to inspect this to make sure there is no scoring or damage to the face or to the top seal. If there is damage to any of the valve discs, we recommend replacing all of them. In an emergency, individual sided units can be reversed for position or for which face is facing the seal. If you have a two-piece unit, such as this in the rear, it cannot be reversed because it will not fit into the ports. As we reinstall the valve discs, we want to make sure that we tuck them into the body. Lubricant is not required. Once they are all tucked in, we can reinstall our top plate assembly. We reinstall the screws and tension them in a crisscross pattern. Please reference your service manual to see the tensioning procedure. We can then reinstall our one-piece spring assembly. The key to installation is making sure that each of the pieces is tucked under the ridge towards the rear. Once they are all tucked in, while pulling back, we can press down on the individual spring pieces. If necessary, you can use a straight tip screwdriver blade in order to make sure you align the spring with the individual valve discs. We can then begin our reassembly of the cam and timer assembly. The square is offset on the center of the cam to the center pin, the same as it is offset on the timer itself. We can reinstall our timer by pressing down and reinstalling our pin from the front. We rotate the pin upward. Making note of the offset, we reinstall the cam into the back of the timer. Pressing downward and back engages the white clip that we rotate down. There is a service assembly for the 255. If we remove this screw, we can then remove the red clip, pulling forward. This is what is called a K255 service kit. The whole top plate assembly, which is the timer, cam, and all of the flow controls, would come in this body assembly. The body is sealed to the top plate via O-rings. In each of the orifices, we want to make sure that this is sealed up properly. One in the front, one in the rear, and four in the center. We recommend replacing the O-rings anytime this has been removed. You can then reinstall the red clip and put the screw back in in order to bring the unit back to service. Regardless of which controller you have, the rest of the reassembly is the same as removal. On the Autotrol 255 with Logix controller, the removal of the controller and cam is slightly different. We begin by pressing down and forward on the tab on the front of the controller. This gives us access to our connectors. We pull down on the tab and towards the rear. If the unit has a meter, we remove it in the same fashion by pressing down and pulling back. We then move to the rear of the unit. If your unit has the white pin, we press it forward and remove it. We can then rotate the motor out of the way and pull it towards the rear of the unit. We can now move to removal of the cam. We remove the cam by pressing down into the back of the unit. We want to get the cam as far to the back as we can so that we can clear the optical sensor in the front. Once we clear the optical sensor, the springs will move the cam out of the way. We can then pull forward and remove it from the body. To reinstall the cam, we need to make sure we line up the arrow that is in the top of the cam with the arrow that is located in the top of the body. To reinstall, we pull the gear as far to the back as possible 
Make sure our arrows are lined up. Pull the cam down and over until we clear the optical sensor. Once it is clear, we can pull forward and engage the cam to the front of the unit. Good luck and thanks for watching.